Hello, welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome here. I am up in northern Maine, and this little vlog is going to showcase some of the crafts I've been working on over the month and the last couple weeks of June. Thank you so much for welcoming my mother to the show last week. Your comments were so kind, and she was thrilled and touched. We are going to venture into surface design today. We've got felt making. And last, I take you on adventure to Eastport and Lubeck, where we went on a whale watch and did some hiking with my nephew. I hope you enjoy. The first stop once school ended was to head up to the cabin uh, up near Cockmagomic Lake. And we took our nephew from Florida, as I had mentioned. This is one of my favorite paddles up a stream. We saw two moose, which I was not able to get any video of. We were able to avoid the bugs uh, by being out on the lake with a bit of a breeze and um, enjoy some beautiful sunshine and warm temperatures. This cabin does not have electricity, but as I've mentioned in the past, I am able to use a generator or solar. And so on this trip, we were gonna be up there for five days. And I brought with me a quilt to work on, which is the Rippling Star Quilt by Carriage Quilt Signs. I'm using Camp Creek fabrics and uh, the background fabric is from Esther Falloon Lau's Forest Fable, and I detail that project in my previous episode. So for this piece of the process, I needed to make a bunch of half square triangles and align them. This particular quilt is not a heavily pieced quilt. So um, I, again, it was just making a series of those half square triangles with background fabrics and then with contrast fabrics. I like to press everything before I cut and um, press the seams open. And at that point, as I also detailed in my last, I like to use my fingers to finger press the seams and then, um, and then bring in the steam. I was enchanted to have this lovely ruby-throated hummingbird female with me um, visiting, kept me company, and I also feel really grateful and blessed to have this beautiful screen porch to work on, not only because of the practicality of the bugs, but it is so nostalgic for me as a child. Um, spent a lot of time on screened porches uh, in the summers. It makes me think of my grandmother, which is why I think I sew a lot. And I've said this before as well. I want to eat turkey sandwiches and drink little, you know, cans of Coke. So, which I did. Um, so at this point, I just squared up those triangles and put the rows together. And here is the finished quilt. Just wanted to detail for you the borders that I used. All of this fabric I procured from the Hawthorne Supply Company, and uh, I like the way they set up their um, new arrivals and coming soon, etc. So it's easy to find fabrics. On the way out, we got to see this female moose, which was one of six on this particular trip. I have continued to work on the Clava quilt by Miss May, and this has a series of cutting templates that you need to use for the pie shape and then the outer perimeter. And I was really struggling with using a rotary cutter to cut the outer border of the pie. So I decided to employ my Cricut cutting machine, which required a little bit of precision. I needed to line up my pre-cut squares in order to get two of the borders out of these, which was slightly frustrating. In the end, I was able to figure out how to align my fabric on the mat so that one edge was the finished edge and it would cut the remaining pieces. 
This has greatly increased my efficiency and has been super helpful. I did have to order more fabric uh, for the background, but all in all, I am well on my way to finishing the middle portion, which will be all of the golden yellows, and then I'll have a, two blue phases above and below it. So I have quite a bit of fleece hanging around my house from my own sheep, which are Icelandics. And I am familiar with the laws of thermodynamics that you cannot create or destroy matter, but you can change its form. And this takes up a lot of space in the house because of the sheer bulk of it. So I decided to create some bats with this Icelandic and turn it into felt. This is completely an experiment. I didn't have a finished concept in mind. I just wanted to create fabric. So I did weigh out what I started with to see how that correlated to the finished um, thickness of fabric, etc. So I did take notes, but again, there wasn't like an end game involved aside from, you know, what's, you know, what fabric can I create? So I was able to split my bats and this particular piece that I did um, ended up being thick enough that I could use it for fabric. Now my process is not at all uh, expert process. It is, I've not been trained, I have no certifications, I've not studied, aside from my own curiosity and kind of uncovering and unventing. And I like to use these bamboo shades for the windows. You can also buy them in smaller versions like placemats. And I also like to lay out my bats um, going one way on one layer and then the next layer rotating 180 degrees um, throughout the piece. So I think this um, ends up being three layers total. And again, it's for me, it's not a science. And again, it's an invitation for you and a demonstration, not a tutorial. I am using hot water on my left and cold water on my right. I'm spraying it down. You can see the wind is not cooperating and it's blowing lots of little leaves and cones into the fiber, but I was going to embrace that as a place-based um, <laughs> uh, serendipitous moment. I wet that down and I'm just adding a bit of Castile soap. You can use Dawn um, and then rolling it up. So I'm using that bamboo piece as the agitation and the friction to mat those fibers together. There's no science for me. It's not like, oh, 16 rocks and then rotate. Uh, it was more kind of organic than that. The one thing I do make sure is to rotate the piece inside the bamboo. So friction, unroll, flip, or rotate, friction, unroll, etc. So that was a, the rhythm of the work and the process, but it wasn't timed. It, there was no precision. I think we've talked about precision before. Um, so here it is finished. This is the Icelandic. The Gotland is on the right, and I have reduced some bulk, and this is ready to get laid on a shelf in my stash for a future project.
I have been back at the gel plate exploring some different surface design techniques. And this one comes from Teresa Morgan. It kind of wants to mimic cyanotype uh, photographs or botanical prints. And so I started out with her tutorial and I would highly recommend her as well as Robert McClendon if you are looking at how to use your gel plate a little bit more creatively or just mark making in general. I hadn't been able to do botanical prints because there haven't been any botanicals yet, but with June in full swing, it was fun to go out and around the dooryard and just pick up some beautiful plants. I'm using watercolor paper and acrylic paint. The key to this technique is the tape so that you're not shifting your paper and that it lines back up with the ghost print of the plant. I'm not really sure how I'm going to use these as usual, but I think they will make great collage bases for future work. So as you can see, we've really run wild across this state, which has been fabulous. We went from Millinocket to Eastport, where we enjoyed this whale watching tour with Eastport Windjammers. It was an absolutely glorious day. Eagles, minke whales, porpoises, views. I couldn't have asked for anything better. And I really felt blessed that I could have a moose in the morning and whales in the afternoon, mountains and coast. And it was fun to get Rob out as well to this part of the state. He hasn't been here um, before. So as part of the end of the whale watching tour, the East Eastport Windjammers features a lobstering trap where they highlight the industry um, and different catches. We had our accommodation at an old Coast Guard station right near Quoty Head State Park and Lighthouse, which we visited the next day. This is the easternmost point in the United States, supposedly where the first rays hit this country. And not only can you visit the Lighthouse and the Lighthouse Museum, it also features a series of trails. And we really wanted to get our nephew out experiencing the coastal landscape. So we started out on a coastal trail, but more importantly, I really wanted to take Rob to the bog. And this is an alpine bog. It is a unique ecosystem here in the state because it has a number of plants, such as the pitcher plant and the sundew, both of which are carnivorous plants. But it also has baked apple or cloudberry and they're only found a couple places here in the state of Maine and this is Rob's absolute favorite um, berry and he didn't realize that they were growing here so we wanted to trek up there and check them out. We also finished our hike out at Greenpoint to get views up to Grand Manan and down the coast. He got to experience um, 
everything the coast has to offer. Sunshine, bright days, fog, beautiful sunsets. It was amazing. As always, thank you for tuning in and investing your time and your resources in this project. A special thank you, deep heartfelt thank you for my patrons and the financial support that they provide. I really enjoy putting these small documentaries of craft and landscape and adventuring up for you. And as always, I appreciate your insight that you provide back to me. I hope this finds you well and in good spirits. Many fond wishes until next time.